an archival document was published. It's a, uh, it's a set of proposals by Soviet cosmonauts to uh, make changes in the onboard equipment of the first Soviet spacecraft. Yuri Gagarin and uh, his colleagues, other cosmonauts, proposed in particular among these changes to provide manual backup to the release of the um, backup parachute uh, during the descent of a cosmonaut. When the cosmonaut descended uh, after the flight, uh, he was ejected from the space capsule and at that moment parachutes deployed. The main parachute and then there was a backup parachute. Uh, in the initial uh, engineering solution, the backup parachute would have been employed automatically if the main uh, parachute didn't come out. Uh, but the cosmonauts insisted that they wanted to have manual control over the release of that backup parachute because they were afraid that automatics may malfunction and the backup parachute would come out at the same time with the main parachute, their lines would entangle and the cosmonaut would fall on the ground without any support. So they proposed introducing that manual release so that they would have some control, at least, at least some control over their own descent. And that proposal was rejected. The release of the uh, backup parachute was automatic. And on the very first space flight, when Yuri Gagarin descended after his flight, descended uh, on, our, on the ground, the main parachute deployed, and soon thereafter, surely enough, the automatics released the backup parachute. So Yuri Gagarin ended up descending on two parachutes. And uh, he was powerless. If, if the lines entangled, he was that close to being killed on descent. Why did it happen? Why the Soviet cosmonauts were not able to uh, give a meaningful input into the design of critical systems on their spacecraft? At the very same time, American astronauts were actually making the very same proposal. They were, they were not descending on, on an individual parachute, they were descending inside their capsule, but there also parachutes were, were deployed. Also there was a main and a backup parachute, and the astronauts also insisted on giving them control or the release of the backup parachute, and they did get that uh, change made. Why did American astronauts go their way and Soviet cosmonauts did not? And here we have to look at the uh, larger social infrastructure of these two space programs to answer this question. We really should understand the role of the Soviet cosmonaut in the Soviet space program. Unlike the United States, where the space program was managed by a single government organization, NASA, in the Soviet Union there was not a, a, a central government agency responsible for the space program. This may sound surprising, knowing how many space, how many uh, government agencies there were in the Soviet Union, but uh, there was no agency for space. Uh, and uh, there were ad hoc uh, state commissions appointed for each space flight, and there were all sorts of agencies involved, military industrial commission, various uh, defense industries, the strategic missile forces, the air force, um, various design bureaus, uh, but there was no single uh, master uh, of all of this entire network of space-related enterprises. And uh, uh, who governed that network? There was, there was actually a, a force that governed it. And that force did not really sit very high on the administrative hierarchy, but nevertheless that force was very powerful. And that force was uh, Sergei Korolev's uh, design bureau which actually designed uh, spacecraft such as Vostok, on which uh, Yuri Gagarin flew. Korolev, even though he occupied a, a relatively uh, uh, not very high middle position in, in the Soviet bureaucratic uh, hierarchy, uh, due to his energy, his connections, his drive, was able to uh, serve as a hub of, of this entire space activity. Uh, he drafted and pushed through government resolutions about the development of the space program. So he was really uh, 
shaping the uh, direction of that space program along with other chief designers. And as a result, space engineers really played a crucial key role in the way the Soviet uh, space program was organized. They had all the power and the cosmonauts had none. So the, the uh, space engineers conceptualized uh, the spacecraft, conceptualized the place for the cosmonaut inside that spacecraft. They viewed the spacecraft as a te complex technological system uh, with unreliable components. And one of those unreliable components was the cosmonaut. The engineers were very concerned with measuring uh, reaction times and various technical parameters of the functioning of the cosmonaut and what they wanted from the cosmonaut is to act predictably and to fit well into that technological system. The cosmonauts for their part wanted to uh, be um, autonomous, they wanted to have a say, they wanted to play a larger role in, uh, in their own space flight, but they were relegated to the role of uh, backup of automatics. The engineers shaped uh, the cosmonauts in, in, the, in the direct physical way. They set standards for the height and weight of the cosmonauts, for the reaction times, subjected the cosmonauts to various um, grueling uh, training procedures, uh, getting cosmonauts accustomed to uh, the kind of loads they would experience in outer space. But there was another also force that shaped the cosmonaut, constructed the cosmonaut in a way, and that force was the leadership of the air forces uh, who were in charge of, cosmonaut, of direct cosmonaut training. And the leadership of the uh, air force was interested in making cosmonauts really a very disciplined core, people who would be loyal, uh, would be uh, morally perfect, uh, would, uh, be, uh, would respect subordination, uh, they would not uh, use their public, high public profile uh, in, in a way that would alienate the Air Force uh, leadership. So they wanted to keep the cosmonauts in check. So they used uh, their power over cosmonauts to discipline the cosmonaut, sort of to mentally make cosmonauts fit into the, their place in the space program. So the engineers fitted the cosmonauts sort of physically and the Air Force leadership tried to fit the cosmonauts mentally into their place in the, um, in the space program. Interestingly, when the uh, cosmonauts encountered their first serious emergency in space, the qualities that helped them uh, helped them in that emergency were not the ones that were cultivated in that system. They were very different qualities. So if, if engineers wanted the cosmonauts to be disciplined, compliant, um, follow the rules, uh, be essentially as automatic as possible, uh, be part of the machinery, uh, what was required in the emergency situation was essentially thinking out of the box. That emergency situation occurred in uh, 1965 during the Voskhod 2 flight, the flight in which uh, the cosmonaut uh, Alexei Leonov performed the, the first spacewalk. And uh, during that spacewalk, uh, everything went fine and Leonov uh, performed all necessary uh, walking activities, enjoyed the scenery. And when it, came, uh, when it uh, was time to uh, go back to his spacecraft, he realized that his spacesuit ballooned and he essentially lost control of his spacesuit. The, the, pre the uh, air pressure inside the spacesuit was such that uh, Leonov could no longer touch his, his uh, hands or feet didn't even touch the spacesuit. He moved ins inside his spacesuit, but the spacesuit itself didn't move. So at that moment, uh, Leonov uh, made a decision to uh, reduce the air pressure in his spacesuit. He had that option, but it was a dangerous option because the fast reduction of uh, air pressure could lead to his blood essentially boiling. Leonov made a quick calculation of the time spent in that spacesuit and he decided that it was safe to do so without consulting the ground control. So he he made a, a, a very essential change in his flight program without consulting the ground uh, because of lack of time. 
uh, and he did it on his own. Uh, luckily, uh, it worked. His, uh, he gained control of his spacesuit and was able to return to his spacecraft. But that was not the end of uh, the problems in that space flight. To get back to Earth, the cosmonauts had to slow down their, their spacecraft. In order to do that, they had to flip it uh, over to put the engines in front of uh, their path so that by firing the engines, they would slow down the, the, the spacecraft. So in order to do that, they had to orient the spacecraft to flip it over. And uh, to do that, they had a, uh, a porthole and some uh, um, equipment to control the spacecraft. But it turned out that um, when the Soviet engineers built that spacecraft, they essentially modified uh, the same old Vostok on which uh, Gagarin flew. So they fitted all this new equipment, particularly uh, the airlock, um, entry into the same old capsule. So they had to switch around uh, all the other equipment in the, uh, inside the spacecraft. So they switched the portholes, they switched the controls. So essentially now it turned out that the cosmonauts while sitting in their, in their chairs, they couldn't see the porthole. And while seeing the porthole, they, uh, they couldn't operate the controls. So uh, both of them had to leave their, had to unbuckle and leave their, their uh, space seats, which was forbidden by the instructions. And uh, the, sp the commander of the uh, spacecraft, Pavel Bilyaev, was kind of looking at the porthole and he was floating, they were in zero gravity. So he was floating, he couldn't control his own position. So uh, Alexei Leonov crouched under the seat and was holding his commander. Well, the commander was looking in the, into the porthole, and then they, they somehow oriented the spacecraft. They were not sure that they oriented correctly, so it was essentially a bet whether they would really uh, be able to return to Earth or not. But the, you know, luckily, they, they did get back, but they, they succeeded precisely because they broke all these regulations, and they were able to act not like a, a well-oiled machine, uh, uh, following a, a, a preset program about as human beings uh, acting on their own. The Soviets tried to construct cosmonauts as a sort of ideal Soviet citizens, as a new Soviet man. Gagarin uh, uh, was supposed, supposed to sit at the uh, 22nd Party Congress representing um, the, uh, this new Soviet man displaying uh, his uh, uh, displaying himself as an exemplar for all Soviet citizens. Well, it turned out that he uh, had a womanizing accident and uh, uh, broke his brow just a few days before the Congress. So he couldn't, had an operation, couldn't attend the Congress. So his behavior was distinctly non-ideal. Uh, and in many other ways, Soviet cosmonauts did not feed that ideal image of the new Soviet man. When their, uh, when their superiors, both engineers and, uh, um, and uh, Air Force superiors, try to fit them into that mold of disciplined cosmonaut who would fulfill the, the instructions, uh, they essentially also had in mind some kind of an ideal Soviet citizen, but though not in the public sense, but in a sort of a real sense, someone who would obey orders, who would never think independently, uh, who would be an obedient citizen. Uh, the Soviet cosmonauts were not like that. They succeeded by not being ideal Soviet citizens. <laughs>